with the very complicated story of Jeremy Mayfield, a five-time winner in the Cup Series. His career and his life have been on hold since being suspended by NASCAR in May of 2009. NASCAR suspended Mayfield indefinitely for what they said was a positive test for methamphetamine. Since then, Mayfield has fought through the court system to clear his name, claiming the test results were the result of a prescription drug and an over-the-counter allergy medicine. The litigation continues, but Mayfield's career has come to an abrupt halt. We sat down with him earlier today. And it's good to have Jeremy Mayfield here in the Race Hub, a long time no see. And, you know, Jeremy, a lot of people are wondering what what you have you been up to since May of 2009? Right. Um, a little bit of everything, really. I mean, we've been obviously, you know, in the battle with NASCAR and the court deal. Everybody knows that. But uh, as far as personally, just... Uh, you know, taking care of stuff around the house and, and, you know, trying to figure out what I'm going to do next and what direction I'm going in and, and you know, as far as uh, career-wise or, um, you know, just a lot of things been going on just trying to make decisions on what we are going to do. But uh, for the most part, just uh, trying to stay busy and around the farm or whatever and, and kind of in the process of uh, opening up uh, a new business and kind of like the metal recycling business with cars and all that stuff and really excited about that. And um, other than that, just kind of, taking it day by day. Before we talk about the future and, what, and, and what's happened, I want to ask you about the, the race at Pocono with Earnhardt because it was a pretty spectacular race and when you passed him for the win, you told me that after the fact, you rubbed on him a little bit. Right. You said you were a little bit apprehensive about how Dale was going to treat you the next week, but you actually told a funny story about that. Yeah, I'll never forget that. He, uh, you know, because everybody knew Dale Earnhardt knew that, you know, he's a great guy off the racetrack more than he was on the racetrack and and, um, you know, when that happened, you know, I knew he was going to be mad at me because I, had, I was talking a big game and stuff, you know, after the race and uh, uh, just trying to, you know, I was excited. I mean, anybody that can beat the owner like that was pretty cool. And, and the next week he comes, the first time I see him, I've been avoiding him in the garage area all weekend. You know? <laughs> and um, at the driver's meeting, I run right into him. You know, and he grabbed me in his head, you know, headlock like he always does, you know, and did the knuckle on the head, you know. And he's, he was he was smiling. I said, I come up and I said, man, I thought you was gonna be mad or that, you know, at me. And he said, why, man? What, what what would I be mad about, you know? I said, okay, you know, something's wrong here, you know. <laughs> he said, the only thing got me is what the stuff you were saying after the race, you know. He kind of threw a jab at me. I said, well, just think if you were me, and you know, this guy's your hero. So you looked up to him racing. I said, the last lap, last corner of the race, you know, you, you bump the guy and do what he always done to everybody else, and you win the race. I said, that, that's like a dream. That's what you know, kids dream about in school, you know. And uh, he knew I was right. He couldn't say anything about it. I said, you, you'd do the same thing, wouldn't you? He said, he laughed. He said, man, just get out of here like that and, you know, brush me off. But that, that was his way of, of you know, grabbing me and doing the head out deal. That's his way of saying, you know, that was a cool deal. And he'd have done the same thing. Jeremy, it's interesting. I was looking on our Facebook page and, and the question was put out, you know, hey, Jeremy Mayfield's going to be on the hub. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and you've never really told your side of the story before uh, after the suspension. And it was interesting to me, like it was split right down the middle, Jeremy. There, there was a group of people that said, hey, we really want to hear from Jeremy. And there was another group that said, he screwed up. Yeah. We don't want to hear from him. Right. And, and that's what we've seen. You know, I've seen a lot of people that uh, with mixed emotions and everything else about it. And I didn't want to be part of this. You know what I mean? I'm just letting everybody know that I didn't want to be in a lawsuit. I did not want to uh, go out of my career like this. I didn't want any of this to happen either. You've been open game. You've been a punchline. People have been, I, like I said, I read it on Facebook. People right. can say whatever they want. Is it hard for you to sit back and take it? Oh, every day. It, it was hard for me to come here today. And, and, and I appreciate so much y'all having me on the show here. But it's hard for me to come here because I got to I fight this, this uh, urge to... I got a lot of things I want to say. You know what I mean? That that I can't, obviously, because of litigation, because I don't want to get in any more trouble whatsoever about saying it. But it's just hard because when you're when you're in this situation, a lot of things. There's a lot of anger now. You know, there's a lot of things that 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 could come out that could, you know, that wouldn't be good for either one of us either. But it's just uh, it's tough when you walk around every day and 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 you get a chance finally to tell your side of the story, but. There's so much more to it that you could tell that would really enlighten a lot of things that, that you just can't tell. When will this be over? I don't know. It's probably going to be a long time now because the appeal process could take, you know, a year or year and a half or whatever. But, um, you know, there again, I've come to grips with, with myself and, and my wife and, and, you know, and our families. And, and, and we've come to, to the um, 
like I said, the Griffs to find out that it's going to be a long time and we'll have to endure that, you know. Jeremy, will you race? I mean, have you been approached to race any other series, any other rides? I mean, is this something you still want to do? Yeah, I mean, I want to. I just, uh, I've been, it's been weird because I, I or, kinda, or you can't because of the litigation. No, I, I can race. I can't okay. race in NASCAR series, obviously. But, um, you know, I'm thinking real hard about maybe doing some dirt races with a, a dirt team. We're trying to put together some stuff right now with the guy, uh, Mark Beaver, out of Shelby, North Carolina. And his, he's got a small team. We, we might turn that into something. You know, we're not sure yet. Um, I want to race. I'd love to go any car racing if I could do that. I'd love to go drag racing if I could do that. But I want to do it in the right way where I'm not, I don't want to struggle anymore. You know, and it's got to be the right situation to do it. And, and um, knowing that there is opportunities out there, but I've been just kind of, um, I don't know, just kind of waiting. You know, I, I really just don't know what I want to do yet. You know, as you said, you've been pretty low-key and low-profile and, and uh, haven't said a lot about it. And uh, It's kind of uh, the surface of everything and, and, and wish it never happened. I wish I could have, you know, continued on with what we had going with the team, whatever, and, and still be back in the sport. But, you know. I take it as it comes, and I know, I, like you said, all the race fans out there, I miss all my fans. I miss going to racetrack. You know, my wife misses traveling also. We just miss the daily deal that we had going on, but um, there you know, we'll make it through it, and it could be worse, you know. To be honest, there were more questions that Jeremy wanted to answer but couldn't because of the pending litigation. Maybe one day, he said. He also said before leaving the studio, Steve, what would you do if NASCAR said you had failed a drug test?